So, folks, uh, here goes nothing. I think we've got a little break in the rain. Hi folks, it's finally the weekend. I'm back in the shack. I'm very excited. I've got lots of projects on the fly. But today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play around with a passive CW audio filter. Now, I have done a video on an audio filter, and that is over here behind me. I'll just uh, move the chair so you can see it. This orange box over here, and there's a video, and I'll put it in the end screen so you'll be able to see it. But this filter here is a bandwidth of 300 hertz and it's a 700 hertz center frequency and it's using operational amplifiers to create the filter and I at the present moment am building a 40 meter transceiver and that's also going to be something that's going to keep me very busy this weekend but I wanted to put in some CW filtering because at the moment the uh, selectivity is pretty damn rotten and so what's happening is I'm hearing signals right across the band. So I'd like to be able to narrow down so I can hear the actual signal that I want to be working with. So what I'm going to do is I did have a, a filter that I built and I tried that filter in the system. I don't, I don't know about the impedances. I don't know about the gain that we're dealing with. It's very, very uh, hit and miss. And when I put it in, the whole system started to oscillate and create all sorts of problems. So I ripped it out and I said, well, what I'm going to do is when I'm using this rig in the shack I'll be able to use the filter that I've already built and I still probably intend on doing that but I just thought it would be nice to see if I could throw in a passive filter and just see if I can get that to work half decently in which case uh, the rig will be more standalone. So now you might notice also that the TS520 is gone. TS520 is kind of like uh, an episode of South Park when Kenny's constantly being killed um, I think I've blown it up four times, or it's blown up four times. I'm worried this time because I think it might be the transformer, in which case the rig might be going to heaven. There are some capacitors nearby that I didn't change. I probably should have changed every single electrolytic, and I didn't really do that. So it's probably my fault if things have gone south. Park. Anyway, um, I will show you the circuit for this uh, passive CW filter and give credit where credit is due, and then we will build it. It's only three or four components. And we'll try it before the audio amplifier, um, after the pre-amplifier, and we'll also put it after the audio amplifier. And we'll just compare the performance and decide, A, whether it's going to work, uh, B, whether we're going to keep it, and C, where it's going to go. Let's go. Well, here it is, folks. Simplicity in the extreme. Giving credit where credit is due. This is a circuit by Kilo 1-3 Uniform. Found it online, Googled passive audio CW filters. It was very easy to find. Very, very simple circuit. We have our audio input coming on on the left, and we come across here. This is a 50 ohm resistor, two watts, it said you need to use. Now, my uh, system actually has two 100 one watt resistors in parallel, which gives me a two watt 50 ohm resistor. And then we come up here to a 5K potentiometer. Now, this potentiometer is what adjusts the bandwidth of the actual arrangement. We have a 155 millihenry uh, inductor. I'm going to wind that myself and be a bit experimental and hopefully we can get up to a value that's um, close enough to that. 330 nanofarad capacitor. I can't remember what type it was. Audio system, I don't think it's too critical. And then we come to our output here. Now the original circuit had I think a 800 hertz uh, center frequency. That's a little bit too high for my liking and my uh, active filter that I've got over there that I told you about is 700 hertz. So I've uh, calculated 700 hertz. I use an online calculator. It seems to be the way uh, I get a lot of stuff done these days because as you all well know, numbers are not my friend. And uh, you could use the formula one, on, uh, one over two pi root LC if you uh, like mathematics. Anyway, that's the circuit. We are going to uh, build it very, very quickly give it a test in, in circuit and see how it goes. You can come along for the ride. Let's go. Okay, I was wondering whether I was going to actually be able to get a 155 millihenry. I thought I was going to have to get on Mouser and buy one. Uh, junk pile. We've got, uh, I think this is a switch mode supply from a modem, a uh, Telstra one that was junked. And uh, we pulled out one of the coils in there 
and, uh, and there it is there. And it's giving me 157 millihenries, which I'm going to go with. Uh, if I take one more turn out, I end up with uh, less than that. So it's giving me a lot of millihenries per turn. So uh, I don't know about the permeability of this core or whether it's appropriate. I think for audio, it should be all right, but we will find out. Um, as you will know, I just like to experiment. So I'm not ever afraid of a failed experiment because every failed experiment is a lesson learnt. Uh, sometimes it's a lesson learned. Sometimes I just do it again. Uh, but uh, we'll get this in now. We'll. Uh, I was going to do it on Vero board, but I think I'm just going to ugly build again, make a little module, and uh, we'll see how we go with this and uh, whether it makes any difference at all. Oh, uh, yes, and uh, getting that coil out, I don't know if you can see that there, but uh, desoldered, and I used one of these. And when I first opened it, I thought, this is going to be absolute rubbish. And Boy, oh boy, it works really bloody well. So, yeah, you get a vacuum going in it and bang. Um, cleaned out four holes in no time flat. Wish I'd had this when I was building the OS QRP and also when I needed to desolder the uh, coil in my QRP Labs uh, QCX because I probably wouldn't have wrecked the board. <whistles> this is a great uh, tool. I don't know how long it'll last, but it certainly did the job for this uh, situation. Thank you, the VK2 NAP, for picking it up for me. It's raining outside. I hope the pitter patter of rain isn't too annoying. Uh, I have ended up placing the filter, which is over here, just after the preamplifier, just before it goes into the amp. Now, I did try it at the output of the amplifier, but there's a 5 volt DC offset sitting in there that. Uh, needs to happen for the amplification to happen I think so I'm pretty sure that's why the uh, capacitor that's in the actual filter is stopping the, uh, the amplifier from working so we've had to go pre or just post the uh, pre-amplification does it make a difference well I will quickly show you it does a, it does make a small amount of difference to the uh, the hiss and whatnot that's happening now it's early days, but I have decided that uh, I want to get this all onto a piece of wood, shorten up all the leads so I can see just how bad the hum really is, and get it in the box. Give it a bit of RF shielding and just see whether we've got a rig that's a goer. And if it's not, well, because it's on the piece of timber, we'll be able to get it out very, very easily. So I'm designing this so I can get it in and out whenever I need to. So that is the plan, but I'll quickly show you uh, what it sounds like. Um, I'll put a tone into it through the uh, Nano VNA, and we'll just have a look at what it sounds like with the filter in and with the filter out. I wish I had some CW to show you, but uh, it's dead on the bands tonight. So, folks, uh, here goes nothing. I think we've got a little break in the rain. That's the Nano VNA tone you can hear. I'll just put the mic near it, and then uh, we'll... We've got someone, someone's actually sending. Should I answer? Maybe. So that is with the, uh, so that's with it um, in. I'll show you what it's like with it out. So I'd say that's an improvement. So folks, here is just a little snippet of what's coming up in the next video. I present the AOE Monster in all its glory.
Well, homebrewing is definitely not the easiest thing in the world to do. I know this video is only about 10 minutes long, but that is hours and hours of fun times condensed into that 10 minutes. But like all things that are difficult, they're also very fulfilling. Thank you for sticking around right to the end of the video. I have lots of fun stuff coming up. So please, if you haven't already liked and subscribed, please hit that like and subscribe button because most of the people that watch these videos are not subscribed and it would be really helpful to me if, uh, if you did so, so you can find out what's coming up next. 7-3, and I will see you in the next episode of The Art of Engineering.